America, unfortunately, is losing the war against drugs, and overdoses are the evidence of that. According to new CDC numbers, drug ODs killed 62,000 Americans just last year. That's more than died during the entire Vietnam War. The biggest driver of those deaths is growing addiction to opioid painkillers and the street alternatives such as heroin and fentanyl. It's one of the greatest crises in American history, and yet Congress seems mostly oblivious to it, at best slow and indecisive. Could Big Pharma's lobbying efforts be a reason why? That's a rhetorical question. The answer, of course, is yes. Matt Murphy was once chief of pharmaceutical investigations for the DEA. He's now president of Pharma Compliance Group. Matt Murphy joins us tonight. Matt, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tucker. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So those numbers are so, I mean, they're almost hard to believe. Over 60,000 Americans dead in one year of drug OD. What should the Congress be doing? Well, they, should, they shouldn't be enacting laws that uh, take the authority away from the Drug Enforcement Administration. They should be enacting laws that uh, provide resources to law enforcement to dismantle, to target and dismantle organizations, criminal organizations that are distributing these uh, prescription drugs throughout the country. Yes. When you were working for the DEA and, and seeing this crisis unfold in real time, did it surprise you that policymakers seem mostly unaware of it or not panicked by it, not upset? Uh, it did, yeah, it surprised me quite a bit, actually, that, uh, you know, politicians didn't get behind law enforcement efforts in, in, until this uh, problem was well down the road. And, um, you know, it, it, it became what's now known as an epidemic. It didn't happen overnight. Uh, there are stories written every day, folks like yourself that are articulating the issues out there that are happening in the country as it pertains to the misuse and abuse of prescription drugs. So, yeah, it, it did surprise me. So you'd read these stories or you'd hear stories about pill mills, particularly in the state of Florida, in, in others to Kentucky, where people could just walk in and walk out with a script for an addictive opioid painkiller. Why weren't, I've never understood, why weren't those places shut down immediately? Obviously, DEA knew about them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, there, there were, many of them were shut down and people were prosecuted and, 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 and went to jail that owned and operated those, uh, which you refer to as pill mills, which, which is appropriate. Um, but this, this problem started before pill mills. Pill mills were uh, a reaction to when we shut down internet pharmacies. Right. And there wasn't any law at the time that prevented a person from taking a credit card and going online and uh, Googling hydrocodone without a prescription, and hundreds of websites would pop up, and, and they could order Vicodin or hydrocodone online, which is the brand name for that is Vicodin, and that would be shipped to their house by a parcel carrier, and the person who ordered the drugs would never have to leave the house. Right. Um, so the Ryan Haight Act legislation was passed, and that mandated at least one face-to-face doctor-patient visit before uh, a prescription for a controlled substance could be issued. And that was a, a case of where the technology got ahead of the law, and subsequently the law did catch up. And when the internet pharmacies domestically were, were put out of business, the pain management clinics popped up because the pill mills uh, had a doctor on site. And there'd be lines out the door, but, security but what I've, with... Uh, of course, but what I've never understood is the, the online pharmacies and the pill mills don't manufacture these drugs. They're manufactured by pharma companies like Purdue Pharma. Didn't they notice that their drugs were being sold illicitly? Of course they did. Uh, manufacturers as well as the distributors, they know where every dosage unit of every medication yeah. that they either manufacture or distribute, where, whose shelf it ends up on the, at the end of the day. So, of course, they knew where their, where their pills ended up, and they know if, if that, that town or geographic region can support the amount of pills that are being exactly. distributed to those areas. But that being said, Tucker, I want your viewers to understand something else about this problem that's yeah. very comprehensive and complex. There are practitioners and there are pharmacists that have a corresponding responsibility to ensure that every prescription they write that's for, for sure. practitioners and fill for, for pharmacists are written for a legitimate medical purpose. And if they're not written for a legitimate medical purpose, like there's a doctor in the, in the neighborhood right. who's writing the same uh, prescription for everybody that comes in the door, they shouldn't be filling those prescriptions. And the doctor well, shouldn't be writing not. those prescriptions. They should be punished right. because it's a, it's a violation of decency, among other things. Matt, thank you for all your efforts to hold people like that to account. It's disgusting. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you.